So after discussing the histology of the thyroid gland, today we are going to discuss the histology of the parathyroid gland. As the name parathyroid gland suggests, this gland they are lying within the capsule of the thyroid gland. That's why they are termed as the parathyroid gland. Now total four glands are there. Two superior and two inferior parathyroid glands are there. Superior parathyroid gland that is developing from the fourth pharyngeal pouch and inferior parathyroid glands they are developing from the third pharyngeal pouch. Now we will see the basic structure of the parathyroid gland. So same like the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland is also covered with a capsule onto the peripheral aspect. And from this capsule, there is a formation of the various connective tissue septa that is extend towards the central substance of the gland and converting this glandular substance into the various lobules. Also, this connective tissue septa is merging with the reticular fibers which are going to support the secretory cells of the parathyroid gland. Now, as far as the cells of parathyroid glands are concerned, there are three types of the cells are there. First, that is the chief or the principal cells. Second one, that is the oxyphil or eosinophil cells. And third one, that is the adipocytes. Now, we will understand this structure of the parathyroid gland with the help of schematic diagram. So, in this schematic diagram, onto the peripheral aspect here you can see this is the capsule of the parathyroid gland and from this capsule there is an extension of this type of connective tissue septa towards the glandular substance that is dividing this gland into the various lobules you can see the four uh, lobule here within this figure uh, formed by the connective tissue septa within the connective tissue septa there is a placement of the blood vessels here you can see the blood vessel here also you can see the blood vessel now within the lobule of the parathyroid gland you can see three types of the cells are there first here you can see the large cell here lightly stained cells here that is termed as the oxyphil cells or eosinophil cells. Now the staining property of this oxyphil cell that is highly eosinophilic, highly acidophilic because of the presence of the numerous mitochondria. Now another type of the cell that is known as the chief cell, they are present in numerous amount as compared to the oxyphil cell which is having the lesser number as compared to the cheap cells and the size of the cheap cell that is small as compared to the oxyphil cells. Cheap cells have vesicular nucleus and the staining property they are going to stain somewhat lighter lightly eosinophilic as compared to the oxyphil cell. And this chief cell they are concerning with the production of the protein that is termed as the parathyroid hormone. Now, oxyphil cells have no important function, no any secretory material. So, this is considered as a resting stage of the chief cells. And oxyphil cells they are uh, going to appear around the age of the puberty and third type of the cell that is found within the lobule of the parathyroid gland that is the adipocytes the fat cells signet ring cells looking here they start to appear with the advancement of the age of that person and in aged person the approximately 50 percent of the uh, tissue that is occupied by this type of the adipo sites. So, this is something regarding the structure of the thyroid gland. 
if we concentrate on the uh, function of the parathyroid gland that is independent of the pituitary gland and the control mechanism that is chiefly depended upon the blood calcium level. So the main function of this parathyroid gland is to increase the blood calcium level. And there are three ways to increase the blood calcium level. First one that is the by the means of the kidney. Parathyroid hormone that is going to increase the reabsorption of the calcium from the glomerular filtrate as well as that is uh, going to promote the formation of the calcitriol hormone by the kidney which is the active uh, form of the vitamin D and ultimately that leads to the increased absorption of the calcium through the GIT. And third mechanism that is to uh, increase the osteocyte as well as the osteoclastic activity and that is going to uh, increase the bone resorption activity and ultimately leads to the higher calcium level in the blood. So thanks a lot for watching the video. We will see the identification points as well as the microscopic image of the parathyroid gland in a next video.